The biggest problem is when we eliminate an, an entire food group. For example, if we take out dairy, we're missing calcium and vitamin D in particular. And then for younger kids, a concern is the fat. So, you know, the 2% in whole milks that we use um, as young children, younger than two, a lot of that fat is really needed for brain development. And so if we're going to take those out, I'm always concerned about making sure that we get enough uh, of the fat through other sources. So as I was saying with dairy in particular, the calcium, vitamin D, and then also riboflavin and vitamin A um, can be decreased in the diet if it's completely avoided. So in egg contribute proteins, um, and this is a concern if animal proteins aren't uh, accepted. So I have a lot of my kids who just can't take animal proteins. They don't feel comfortable chewing them, swallowing them, et cetera. So we have to find a way to make sure that we still meet our protein needs. With wheat, uh, some B vitamins, folic acid, iron, and zinc from fortified products. So all of our normal wheat products are enriched. So they have vitamins added to them to kind of meet our needs as a population. But when we take those out, the substitutes, so the gluten-free products, for example, um, actually don't have the fortification that the wheat does. And I'll go through a couple of slides and why I talk about this in clinic. Um, nuts, of course, offer fats, so including the essential fats, omega-6s, essential fatty acids, and then the alpha-linoleic acid um, is an anti-inflammatory uh, uh, fat that obviously is helpful in inflammation. Fish and shellfish, I get a lot of questions about omega-3 fats and how else can we get those in the diet. Alpha-linoleic acid is a um, precursor to um, the same pathways uh, for omega-3, so that's another way we can get those through flax um, and some other seeds as well. Um, but the omega-3s, it's really hard to get those in um, when you don't have fish or shellfish in the diet. Uh, 